friends, I hope you're enjoying a wonderful Easter celebration with your families. And today I'm here with the Arts Council of New Westminster to present you with another craft project. My name is Clarissa Banos and I'm a visual artist and I live and work in New Westminster. So what I brought for you today is this beautiful um, Easter project that includes some marbling as well as some mixed media um, elements in it. So as as far as the material is concerned, uh, first of all, we're going to need some aluminum foil. So shaving cream is one of those. And we're also going to use some food coloring for this project. We are going to use a paintbrush. It doesn't need to be any specific size as long as you have kind of like a thin bottom of the brush. We are going to need uh, some cardboard. Okay, but what you're going to do is just cut your cardboard in like little square or rectangular shapes. They don't need to be perfect. They just need to be sturdy, okay? So this is the kind of material that we need, like sturdy cardboard. And also we're going to need some paper and this paper needs to be sturdy as well. So for this part, you are going to need a watercolor paper or you can also use any white paper that is of a sturdy material. Now, try to avoid any printing paper because then the project is not going to work, okay? So last but not least, we're going to need some paper towel, okay? And also, if you have like a plastic bag, at the end of the project, we're going to use this one just to put, you know, the garbage in there. So that's for the first part of the project, which is what we call marbling, okay? So we're going to be creating some marbling effects to create the X, and that's going to be part one of the project. Now, part two, we are going to need another piece of sturdy cardboard. Now, um, this is just the back of a paper pad that I have, like a watercolor paper pad. We're also going to need some construction paper. In my case, to create this kind of like a basket at the bottom, I just chose to use yellow construction paper. Now, you don't have to use yellow. You can have, um, you can use any other color of your choice. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a flat color. This is just the construction paper I had handy. And what else we're going to need? We're going to need some um, oil pastels, okay? Now, this is not mandatory. This is just an option. So you can use markers as well, okay? If you don't have oil pastels, you can use markers and that will work just as well. We're going to use a pencil, just a regular pencil. Um, and for uh, to create the outline of the eggs, we have two choices. You can either use a black oil pastel or you can use a sharpie so this is up to you i don't like getting my i don't mind getting my um hands messy with the oil pastels but some of you might not like the feeling of it so feel free to use some sharpies we're also going to need a scissor and we're going to need some um, glue sticks okay so that's pretty much what we need to create this project so first of all we are going to grab our aluminum foil and we're going to place it on top of our surface surface could be your table or wherever it is the flat surface that you're working on so first step is to shake your shaving cream and what we're going to do okay we're going to add some of the shaving cream i'm trying to create a rectangular shape on top of my aluminum foil Okay, so I'm being very generous with the amount of shaving cream that I'm using. And while I'll do this, I'm just gonna let it sit for about 30 seconds. And as you can see, we are also working with texture. Look at that beautiful texture of the shaving cream. And texture is just one of the seven elements of art. So while this starts to set, so, okay. So now I'm going to grab my next material, which is the shaving cream. I mean, not the shaving cream, the food coloring. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
add some drops of my first color which is this beautiful bright green and you can just buy this um, these food colorings you know a local grocery store of your choice so as you see I'm just adding some random drops of each one of the colors and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to turn it upside down and what we need to do now to create this marbling effect is I'm just going to put it in the center and I'm being very gentle and I'm doing this very slowly right I'm being very careful and all I'm doing is moving my paintbrush around and around and around in circular motions and I'm taking my time because I'm not in a hurry because I want to see this design come to life so just take your time and the reason why you want to take your time while you do this is because if you do it too fast then all these colors are going to turn into this like brown shade that you really don't want to work with all you do is you want to work with this beautiful swirls more and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our watercolor paper and we are going to gently place it on top of the shaving cream and we are going to just massage the paper take your time and I'm being very very gentle I'm doing this in a very gentle matter, manner and if you get a little bit of that um, food coloring at the back of your paper don't worry about it sometimes that happens when we create art sometimes we get messy but that's okay it's okay to get messy when we're creating art okay so I'm just going to do this I'm just going to massage the paper against the food, um, against the shaving cream so that all that food coloring gets printed on my paper so this is what we're going to do we're going to grab a corner of your paper and we're just going to gently 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 remove it from the shaving cream and we're going to end up with something that looks like this okay and I'm going to keep my pattern over there and I'm just going to grab another piece of aluminum foil and I'm going to place my paper see how it's filled with the shaving cream I'm just going to place it on top of that piece of aluminum foil and what I want to do now is I'm going to grab my little cardboard or um, an old credit card if you don't have cardboard handy and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start scraping off all that extra shaving cream so I'm scraping it off and it gets in here and if you want to reuse that same piece all you do is just clean the shaving cream in your paper towel and just repeat the same step again and again and again until you get rid of all the extra shaving cream on top of your paper help you and this is how it turned out to be for me look at that beautiful pattern so I have all the colors combined into all these beautiful swirls and colorful patterns and then we're going to start creating our composition our Easter composition okay so the first thing we need to do is to recreate the eggs right so what shape do eggs have of course an oval okay remember we talked about shapes before so we're going to use the shape of an oval to create the eggs so now I have two of these ones and I'm just going to go with this one first just because I don't know it's more vibrant so I really really love the pattern here and I think it has a lot of potential to create that beautiful um, composition so all I do is I turn it upside down and you see it still has stains at the back but it's okay so I'm going to try and make uh, let's see one two three four five now you can add three eggs if you want or you can add ten eggs so that's really up to you so I think in my case 
I think I'm going to go for four to start with, okay? So I'm just going to draw an oval at the back of my paper. Now, does this have to be a perfect oval? It doesn't have to be a perfect oval. As long as it's an oval that you are happy with, that's what we're going for, okay? So perfect. So this is how my ovals look like, okay? Even my ovals are going to be a little bit different from yours because I'm drawing them freehand, okay? And remember, there's no right or wrong when we're creating art. It's just a matter of personal interpretation and self-expression. Okay, so I have four ovals. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut them up with the paper. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my ovals. I'm doing this a little bit fast, but if you need help from your parents, remember to ask if you're not too familiar with the use of scissors, okay? Some of you are probably very familiar with the use of scissors. So I have my first egg. And I'm gonna cut the second. And then I'm going to start creating the outline for the eggs. Now, do you have to have an outline in your eggs? You don't, it's up to you. When I use the word composition, what I'm trying to say is we're going to start arranging all of our elements in on top of our background, okay? So I have my cardboard. It doesn't need to be a cardboard, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to decide how do I want my eggs to go. Maybe this one goes a little bit tilted or this one goes in the front, the other one goes in the back. This is really up to you. But my first element is to, my first element of choice is the egg or the eggs. And I'm just going to start, you know, arranging them in a way that I like. You're going to do your own composition. Okay. So I think I like it that way, okay? So I'm going to start gluing. I'm going to start placing my eggs in the background. And remember, we are exploring the idea of space, right? So some of the eggs are going to go in the back and some of the eggs are going to go in the front. So they're going to be overlapping to recreate the idea of space. So I'm going to place mine over here. And as I said at the beginning, be very spontaneous. You know, there's no right or wrong when we're creating art. Just try to explore and try to see what makes you happy when it comes to your composition. Okay, so that's, that's egg number one. I'm placing egg number two right there. So I have two eggs right there. All of these are vertical, but I'm just going to use one horizontal because I want to explore and I want to experiment with something different, okay? But you do your own composition. Okay. And as I'm working, I can smell the shaving cream and it smells really good. So this is, you know, very like a very sensory project. We're using texture, the sense of touch, the sense of smell. We're using our eyes. Okay. So this is how my composition looks like so far. Okay. Now, I think I'm ready to start cutting out my bowl. So for my bowl, all I want to do is, I'm going to draw a curve curvy line on this side, just a curvy line, and then I'm going to repeat the same process. So I start right in the corner and I just turn my pencil in a circular motion. Does it need to be perfect? It doesn't need to be perfect. This is how mine turned out to be. So maybe yours looks, you know, a little bit more symmetrical than mine, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut my 
oval. I mean, not my oval, my bowl. Okay, so that was pretty simple. And I'm going to repeat the process just so that you see again how I did this bowl. Okay, so I have my bowl ready. There we go. So I'm going to repeat the process just in case you didn't get it the first time. So I start on this corner and I move my hand in a circular motion. And I'm going to aim to get over here. I'm just going to draw a dot over there. So I just move my hand in a circular motion. Okay. And there we go. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I start over here, and then I just move my pencil in a circle on motion. And this is how I get my bowl. And then just cut it out. And it ends up looking like this one. Now, as I said before, you don't have to do yellow paper. You can use pattern paper or any other material that you want to use. Or you can use some more of this watercolor paper. You can use more of this watercolor paper and then you can just add, you know, like details with your oil pastels. Or if you're feeling, you know, brave and bold, you can use more pattern paper. Okay, so that's really up to you. So the next thing I want to do is I want to place my ball at the bottom of my paper, okay, of my cardboard. So I'm just going to do that right now and I'm just going to add the glue at the back and again take your time you don't have to do this fast this is my style of working but you have your own style right so just take your time and make sure that every single area in the back of your bowl is filled with glue or else it's not going to stick as well Okay, and yeah, you're going to get your fingers a little bit messy, but that's okay. That's part of the creative process. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to paste my ball at the bottom, bottom of my composition. Okay, so this is what makes me happy. Okay, so this is my project. Now, your project might not look like mine, but that's okay. You're going to do what makes make you happy. Okay, so now I have this looking like this so far. And here comes the time when we add the outline to our X. Now, we have two choices, as I said in the beginning. We have um, choice number one, which is oil pastel. Or choice number two, which is a thick sharpie. So you know what? For my composition, I'm going to go with oil pastels, just because I love oil pastels. And I know I might get messy, but you, you know what? I don't mind. So I'm just going to go, and I'm just going to outline my eggs. I'm going to start with egg number one, and all I'm doing is writing, is just drawing. A black outline. I'm just following the edge of this egg. I'm just going around and I have my first outline. Yes, see? That's egg number one. And you just repeat the process with all of the eggs. Now, why did I choose to use oil pistol? Because, as you can, if you're using oil pistols, you will see that when it's applied on watercolor paper it just creates a little bit more of the idea of texture right it's very very um it's very very i don't know how to explain it but you will see that it's very different from using a sharpie it just adds texture it just adds visual texture to your composition Okay, the pigment of the oil pastel is just very waxy and it's very satisfying as well. That's why I like to use oil pastel. It's very satisfying when you apply it. Okay, and as I said before, this doesn't need to be perfect, okay? I'm just trying to suggest 
the line, the edge of each egg to reinforce the idea of space. So the eggs that are in the front are going to represent the eggs that are closer to me, okay? And the eggs that are in the back are going to represent the eggs that are the farthest away from me. So this is how my ball looks like so far. Now, for the ball, I decided to write Happy Easter. Now, do you have to write Happy Easter? You don't have to write Happy Easter. However, I would recommend that you add some details. So you know what? In this case, I'm just going to draw some flowers. I'm just going to draw some flowers, okay? Because we want variety. So I'm going to be very, very spontaneous. And I just came up with this idea, and you know what? That's okay. That's okay, because this is how I express myself, okay? Do you have to make flowers? No, you don't. You do you, okay? You can make patterns, like, the ones in the back or you can make any kind of texture that you want to add so in my case I decided you know what since spring is here I'm just going to do some flowers okay but that's me you don't have to copy me you can just you know do your own idea okay so I'm just going to make these flowers and for this I'm just using my markers. Do you have to use markers? No, you don't. You can use oil pastel or you can use um, crayons if you have crayons or you can use color pencils. Anything that makes you happy, that's what you're going to use. Okay, so I have my first flower down and I'm just going to go around repeating the same process and what am i using right now to create these flowers i'm using line i'm using shapes and i'm using color i think i missed that element when i was introducing you to the elements of art i think i missed mentioning color color is another important element of art Okay, so I have, I think I'm going to do three pink flowers and then I'm going to add some purple, um, purple flowers as well. Okay, and as you can see, my flowers are not perfect flowers, but they are perfect for me. So, that's okay. As long as they make you happy, they're perfect flowers. Okay. So I have three flowers so far. I'm going to add another one over here. And then I think I'm going to be very, very spontaneous in some of those circles. I'm not going to turn into flowers. I might just turn them into eggs because, you know, it's Easter, right? So we're just exploring and we're just experimenting with the concept of eggs, Easter eggs or Easter bunnies or Easter chicks whatever makes you happy in Easter that's what you're going to explore okay so this is going to be my last flower so I have one two three four five flowers okay perfect so I have my flowers am I doing this too fast you don't have to go as fast as I'm going take your time you know take your time and then I'm just going to reinforce that circle in the center. So this is how mine looks like so far. And again, yours is probably looking very different than this one, but that's okay. So I'm just going to add more circles. I'm going to create this idea of pattern inside the bowl as well. If you don't want to do all this work, you can write Happy Easter. That's another choice. That's another option, right? But in my case, I just decided to do something different. Okay, so this is how mine looks so far. It's me, it's like very colorful and very bright. And another shape that I love working with is a spiral shape. I add spirals to everything I make. And the reason why I do that is because visually it adds a lot of pattern. It's 
to your composition. So I'm just going to add some spirals in my bowl. Now this is starting to look like a very happy bowl. I'll show it to you in a minute. Okay, so I think I'm happy with my bowl. And your intuition as an artist will tell you when to stop. So my intuition as an artist is telling me, hey, you know what, Clarissa, you're done. So I'm done with my bowl, okay? And last but not least, I'm going to work in my background because, well, I have the choice of leaving it, you know, just plain like it is, but I think I'm just going to add more texture and more pattern to the background as well. Now, for this particular case, just because I'm using um, a neutral color in the background, I'm using this um, brown, I'm using oil pastels. Okay, but if you're using like a white background, you can also use markers. You not, not necessarily have to use oil pastels. I could try my, my markers on this background, but I'm not sure how, will they, how good they will look. And I really want this pattern in the background to stand out. So I'm just going to go with my oil pastels. Okay, but you work with which, which whatever materials you have handy okay you can use color pencils or you can use crayons it's really up to you you can use paint as well okay only paint will take a little bit longer to dry but that's okay that is okay so i'm just drawing all these swirls and spirals at the back do you have to do spirals no my friend you can do whatever makes you happy you can do flowers, or you can do stars, or you can do hearts, or you can do more eggs if you want, okay? So I'm just showing you, you know, different possibilities. But at the end of the day, you are going to make those artistic choices, okay? I have a purple and white at the background, but you know what? I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about color. So you know that we have the three main colors or primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. But we also have another family that is called the secondary colors, which are green, purple, and orange. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret that you can use when you're creating artworks. There are some combination of colors that we call complementary colors that when you place them side by side, they make each other stand out. They're like best friends. So for example, purple and yellow are complementary colors. Purple and yellow, whenever you place them side by side, that's a perfect combination. We also have green and red complementary colors place them side by side and that's a perfect combination and we also have blue and orange whenever you place blue and orange side by side that's a perfect combination they're just like best buddies so anyways i'm going to show you how my final composition looks like so very different from the initial sample because I was being intuitive and I was just following my intuition, right? I was being spontaneous. But it doesn't really matter if yours looks like this or like this, or it look, if it looks completely different. As long as you're happy with your project, that is exactly what you're aiming for. So I'm just going to say thank you for joining me today, creating this fun artwork. And um, just keep on celebrating Easter and having fun and just keep on exploring and experimenting with any art supplies that you have at home. And if you can introduce repurposed materials or recycled materials, even better. So have a good time. Bye.